I would start looking at the foods that I am consuming and make sure if you can't eat a lot of volume that you are getting the proper nutrient density. So what do I mean by that? I mean, your diet should be pretty much meat. Welcome to Keto Beyond the Couch, episode 267. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are two, two crazy, crazy ketos. ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome. If you're new here, please say hi down below. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos and we do product reviews. We talk about various keto topics and every Monday we go live on Keto Beyond the Couch because life exists beyond the couch. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and X. And we have a website which is 2crazyketos.com and that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time I wake up from a nap you'll be alerted to it. So we are currently in Littleton, Littleton, Georgia. No, North Carolina. North Carolina, <laughs> Littleton, North Carolina at the Thousand Trails Lake Caston Campground. And I will say, this is a gorgeous campground. It is on a beautiful lake, but it is raining and cold outside. It is perfect napping weather, and I have taken full advantage of it. So we got here, and then Joe began the process, as always, of just assessing the internet situation. We're covered in trees. So we have T-Mobile, we have Verizon, and we have Starlink. Uh, T-Mobile is kind of so-so, um, not really getting much service on Verizon. And Starlink, we have a giant overcast of trees, which in the past, before Starlink... We would have loved. We loved. But now we're like, we need a clear open sky, and we don't have it. So we decided that we weren't going to try to live stream, because according to Starlink, we have obstructions, and we're going to have uh, basically... Every 18 minutes, our internet is going to go down, and that's not going to work for Keto Beyond the Couch. So we no. are sorry that we are not live streaming this, that we are just re-uploading it. But we will be live in the chat because there is Wi-Fi available. Uh, first of all, we can go on our T-Mobile, but also we found out in the office there is like public Wi-Fi, but you have to be sitting there to do it. But when we pulled in, we were like, this is awesome. We did have a little bit of an issue. Um, when we first got in here, the way this works is there are certain campsites that are allocated to 1,000 Trails members, and it's first come, first serve. So she said, drive around, find a spot, set up, and then come tell me where you're at. So we drove around. We found the spot that we wanted to be in. We got 90% set up, and then somebody pulled up. And he goes, oh, well, I already reserved that campsite. We're like, wait, what? And so we we're like, well, we just went by what she said. She said, find an empty campsite. And he was like, well, I, I picked it and then went up there. And so I offered to the gentleman to move. Right. But I told him it was going to take me about 45 minutes to break down, you know, get everything hooked back up. So he ended up going across. It was just like a miscommunication. You know, he didn't like put anything in the site to say, hey, I want this site. But overall, I think he ended up with a better site because he's actually got a better line of the sky. Right. And he's in the site he's in, he's more level than we are. Yeah, it was a little bit weird trying to level it. For yeah. Sure. Well, we had an issue the other day where I knocked the um, stabilizer jack and I had to unplug it. And I think by unplugging it, you I reset, reset it. the level. So I have to figure out how to set like, okay, this is what I want you to consider level. Anytime I have to read about that. You are trying something new, whether it is you're breaking in a new camper or maybe you're just starting keto there are some bugs you have in your mind how everything is going to run and then there's how it actually happens yeah. right so um it's good to come with an open mind and decide you have to decide whenever you're trying something new i am not going to freak out when when not if we're gonna move the camera don't go quite as planned so you're in frame more well thank you we also noticed that our friends the wayward wag 
Bags are actually a few sites away from us. They were co-contestants with us on season two of RV Unplugged. I have not said hi yet. No, because you've been has, taking a nap. I've been napping and it has not stopped raining yet. Yeah, and but I do want to say again, we will be contestants on season two of RV Unplugged. First episode airs on May 29th. We'll Don't actually be it. on the Low Carb Cruise, but we will be live in the chat when it's airing. Um, so make sure you go over to RV Unplugged on YouTube. I'll leave a link up here. Make sure you subscribe for it so that you can be, and don't forget the bell notification so that you're uploaded, you're notified when the new episodes go live. Also, use the link down below in the description because you can watch and win. Right. And they're giving away like loads of cool things. Tons if of you're stuff. an RVer, they're giving away right now like free batteries from Big Beard Battery Hello. Company. Hello. Which they're not cheap. They're a couple thousand dollars. So definitely you want to sign up to win because it's not just for our beers. No. They do things like give away solo stoves. That's something that anybody could use. I believe they're giving away an RV at some point. So. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so before we move any further, I did want to say that today's video is being sponsored by Keto Brick. Hey, keto Brick. We absolutely love Keto Bricks. If you don't know perfect, what Keto Brick is. Perfect camping food. Yes. This is a 1,000 calorie meal bar. It is about 80% fat. We absolutely love it. It is the brainchild of our good friend Robert Sykes, also known as Keto Savage, and his wife, Crystal Sykes. And they're amazing. They have a lot of different flavors. This is actually the nootropic icing flavor. Which Delicious. was a collaboration that they did with Keto Brains, another product we absolutely love. And we utilize this on a pretty regular basis. It's great for camping. It's great for backpacking. If you're going kayaking, if you're out on the day, you need a shelf-stable food. This is something that is really, really good. Very clean ingredients. But I also wanted to mention, I just got an email from Robert. Okay. Evidently, there is a major shortage for cacao butter. Cacao! Oh, which is one of the main ingredients in here. I guess there was like some heavy rains. What are you looking at? I'm looking at the fuzz Fuzzy on for my your hoodie. face because you were, I can't get it. I guess this is just it. <laughs> it's purple fuzz. <laughs> there you go. It's from my hoodie because I haven't shaved. Um, so anyway, there was, I guess, excessive rains where mm. all of the cacao butter comes from. And because of that, the price of cacao butter has quadrupled. Wow. So he said he's going from like $5 a pound. The, the quotes that he's currently getting are is $20 a pound. Oh my gracious. And he doesn't really want to have a price increase, but at this point, like when your main ingredient is costing you four times right. more, you have, to. Uh, you have to do something. So what they're going to do is they're not going to raise the base price of the brick, at which is $12. They're going to lower the discount across the board by 10%. Mm. Okay. So they had the bulk discounts. Like, for example, if you bought it, there was 24 bricks, you got 30% or 35% off. That's going to drop to 25. So all the discounts are going to drop. And that is effective May 1st. Mm. So you have a few days. If you're interested in getting some keto brick, now would be the time. If you need some keto bricks, I would definitely order it before May 1st. Because May 1st, the price is going to go up when it comes to the discounts and stuff. So definitely get it before then. I'll leave a link down below. Keto Brick does support our channel. We greatly appreciate them for doing that. And you can also use the code 2 Crazy Ketos for $12 off your first order of multiple bricks. So use that link down below. It does support the channel. It'll also help you get some Keto Bricks before the price increase on May 1st. So Good to know. Thank you, Keto Brick, for sponsoring 2 Crazy Ketos. And thank you to you guys for supporting the sponsors who support Two Crazy Ketos. So if you are new to our channel, our Keto Beyond the Couch is normally aired live every Monday at 10 a.m., but when we can't air it, we just put up a video and we go live in the chat. It is all about our subscribers. We love to celebrate our subscribers. And so we like to find different success stories from our social media groups like Mighty Networks, which is our main one. You can join there for free at members.twocrazyketos.com. And then we also go through and answer a bunch of questions. So we're going to start off with the very first thing that we have. This is our Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week from Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. It's an inspirational post, and it's perfect. She said, you make mistakes, 
mistakes don't make you. Wow. That is not the sum total of who we are, our mistakes. That's not it. That's not the totality of it. I love that. Jennifer, thank you so much for that reminder. Now we actually have a second Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. Two professors. Yeah, because we didn't, I didn't find a lot of like stories. Transformation stories. So please, please, please make sure you go leave your story uh, on our social media, like in Mighty Networks or in our Facebook family group. But the next one we have is from D. Hey, D. D put up this little picture of a post-it note. It said, when you want different for yourself, you have to start moving different. Old keys don't unlock new doors. Wow. And how long did I sort of quagmire in doing the same thing and continue to be disappointed that I haven't had new results. What do they say? The definition of an insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. Wow. Maybe this is the week where we try something new in a positive way. If we know that doing something differently will probably most likely get us different results, let's do something differently. Mm -hmm. I love that. Now, like I said, please share your story. Your story is super important for two reasons. Number one, it helps you remember where you came from, but more importantly, it helps other people to get motivated. When they see your story, they can identify with you and go, oh, somebody else gets me, and if they can do it, I can do it. And this week, we do have our subscriber of the week. It is Joel. Hey, Joel. And Joel just put up the simple post. I achieved my first goal of under 25% body fat. Wow. I'm celebrating today with a 36-hour fast, and I'm on to my next goal of a 35.375-inch waistline. Wow. I love that. Congratulations, Joel. And also, look at the specificity in his goals yeah. like that is being specific he's got eyes on exactly where he wants to go and because you have a clear direction i think it makes it easier to focus on it and head toward that goal i yeah. love that great job let's take a quick fade to black and then we will come back with some comments okay so while we were in lancaster my sister turned us on to these wow the cold cocoa latte from Franny's. At first I thought they were like sparkling seltzers, but they're really just a fancy soda. And they have chocolate and vanilla. Actually, so they had a few different brands. The, they had like a ginger beer that's really good, an orange that's really good. But we fell in love with this cold, cold cocoa latte. The ingredients are okay. They're better yeah. than like Coke, but not as good as Zevia. They do use uh, acid sulfate and potassium as well as sucralose. But boy, are these things good. They're very tasty. When my mother and sister left, we actually went back because there's only one store we can find them in and we rated them for everything they have. Kaufman's. That's where yeah. it was. And uh, I think we came home with like seven or eight cases of it because it, it's like, when are we going to go back to Lancaster? It was amazing. I wish they sold them closer to home, but we will be happy with what we got. Yep. <laughs> Okay, our first comment is from Tina. Hey, Tina's Wellness Journey. To the person who asked about bread. I like cloud bread a lot, as well as chaffles. The chaffles are more sturdy for burgers, in my opinion. Egg white bread is good, but it is expensive to make. Yes, it is. Uh, cloud bread and chaffles are easy and less expensive. Chaffles can be just one egg and a half a cup of mozzarella for two chaffles. Cloud bread is just separated eggs. Sour cream, cream cheese, salt, and baking powder. Yeah, fantastic. Tina, I completely forgot about mentioning chaffles last week. And chaffles is, if you're looking for a sandwich, if you're looking for something for your burgers, chaffles is great. And you can make it with just egg and mozzarella cheese. You can change the flavor and make really good things. If you use keto chow, where you're going to take some keto chow and then add in some mozzarella cheese and egg and... I mean, you if you use the uh, tomato basil one, it makes a really good pizza crust. It's excellent. I, I really appreciate you, Tina, for mentioning this because I completely forgot to talk about you chaffles. You spaced out on that. Uh, next one is from Amy. Hey, Amy. Wow, I went back to watch the yogurt video, and Rachel, I thought you looked great then one year ago, but wow, you look sensational now. I can't believe what one year has done uh, good for you. Thank you both for the recipes and the tips and tricks. Amy, thank you so much. I appreciate that so much. Um, definitely my, in this last year, it has been a journey for stress reduction. And we say it a lot. I, I know I probably sound like a broken record about it, but 
in addition to getting what's going on on your plate headed in the right direction, you also want to have eyes on your sleep, on your movement, and certainly on your stress. Yeah. It helps. Next one is from Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Michelle said, wow, I can't believe it's been that long since you last visited Joe's mom. I remember you introduced her to Keto Chow. We did because the last time we visited, we had our very first flavor of Keto Chow Caramel introduced. Caramel Macchiato. Caramel Macchiato. And yeah, she was able to, to give it a try. It is, it, it, the years fly by. This yeah. is definitely a reminder to somebody out there. You know you need to contact your loved one. You know you need to visit. You know you need to schedule that family reunion. But because, you know, the schedules get packed with stuff, a lot of times we put off the things that are most important, right? Yeah, and it was really a great visit with my mom. We had a lot of fun driving around the Hudson Valley and Sullivan County area with her, just sitting, talking. Uh, then we came down to Lancaster, spent a few days with her. And honestly, she's impressing me. 84 years old. You'll keep her. She She's moving well. She's doing really well mentally. Like, she looks good, especially for 84 years old. And then my sister has started doing keto. Fantastic. She's I, lost like 20 pounds. I am so incredibly proud of both of those young ladies. But yeah, definitely. Mom and sister, five stars. Five stars. Highly recommend these ladies. Next one from Paul. Hey, Paul. Paul said, I love you two idiots who put yourselves on YouTube. Aw. Thanks for your help and your entertainment. You are better than any medical professional. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, I don't know Paul. about being better than any medical professional. I don't but. know either. But these two idiots that put themselves on YouTube sure do love you guys. And we're so thankful for this platform, for this this chance to shed some positive light yeah. on on people's journey to better health. It's definitely the hardest job we've ever had, but certainly the most fulfilling job that we've ever had. And we're just so proud of you guys yeah. for, for, for sticking with this thing. Yeah, we've been talking to different people when we've had our meetups and stuff like that. And, you know, we do get negative comments. We do mm -hmm. get nasty comments. But it makes it so much more worth it when we get just one comment from someone like my A1C has gone down. I've lost weight. I'm moving. I'm able to be on the ground with my grandchild. It makes it all worth it. It truly does. Uh, next one is from Trish. Hey, Trish. Hi. Have you made regular keto without uh, more fat? I'm meeting to do lower fat. I'm not sure how to make it. Thanks for everything you do. You're talking about like regular keto chow? I think they're talking about keto chow and that's how I read it, which is why I'm gonna put it in here. So here's the thing about keto chow. Keto chow needs to have some fat. Mm -hmm. Okay, honestly, here's the thing. If you're new to keto. Welcome. Please don't be afraid of fat. Right. Don't be discouraged by fat. Our body needs fat. That's our fuel source. You basically fill your body from really three things okay alcohol which we do not want to fuel our body with alcohol we it's, don't. it's it's a poison um carbohydrates and fat those are the main really carbohydrates and fat are the main fuel sources you're going to have um if you're not having carbohydrates you need to give your body a fuel source and that fuel source would be fat protein is not a great fuel source Protein is a great building block and our body absolutely needs it. And you need a decent amount of it. Really, at least 100 grams of protein a day. But if you're just consuming protein with not enough fat, your body will attempt to use that protein for fuel through a process called gluconeogenesis, which honestly is not very efficient because it takes a lot of energy to convert that protein to fuel because it's going to convert it to sugar because that's what it needs to do, which could elevate your glucose. But I like to use this analogy, fat. Let's say your car was running on fat and you had really terrible gas mileage and you were getting four miles to every one gallon of fat. If you try to use protein for fuel, you're gonna get one mile to every four gallons. Definitely not protein. fuel efficient. So definitely not efficient. You do need to consume fat. Now you have to regulate the amount of fat. You need to find the amount of fat 
that your body needs to not reduce your metabolism too much and slow it down too much, but you don't want to overdo your fat to the point where you won't lose any weight. So you have to figure out what is that number? Like, for example, let's say if you're maintaining your weight at 140 grams of fat per day, then you want to drop to like a 130. You don't want to slash it. No. Slashing it may result in some weight loss short term for a couple of weeks, but then your body's metabolism will slow down because you're not giving it enough fuel. So don't be afraid of fat if you're new to keto. I'm not saying eat gobs and gobs of butter but you wanna be eating at least one gram of fat to one gram of protein and probably closer to like one and a half to two times. If you look at traditional keto ratios, and I don't like to do ratios, but your calories that you're consuming should be coming from about 65 to 75% fat. So just keep that in mind. Now with keto chow, if keto chow has vitamins and nutrients in it, and some of them are fat soluble vitamins, which means you can't absorb them without fat. So you do need to consume at least 10 grams of fat with the keto chow. So that would be roughly a tablespoon of butter. Here's what I'm going to say though. You're probably going to get hungry very quickly. Remember keto chow is a meal replacement. So that meal, should be about four to 600 calories minimum. It should look like a meal. Because we're not supposed to be eating 11 or 1200 calories. If you're eating 11 to 1200 calories, you're, I can almost guarantee you're not eating enough food. There's a reason why the USDA says recommended 2000 calorie a day diet. We need to be eating above our basal metabolic rate. Now, if you don't know what a basal metabolic rate is, that is what your body needs just to stay alive. Like if you never got out of bed, if you just laid in your bed and you pooped your pants, right. like you didn't do anything. Don't get to the Basic kitchen. Basic functions, like didn't get up to go to the bathroom, didn't go to eat, do anything. Pretty much none of us have a basal metabolic rate of like 12 or 1300 calories. So we need to stop acting and living like we do. When you <laughs> eat lower than your basal metabolic rate, that's where you're going to end up really slowing down your metabolism. And it's going to take a long time to reverse that. So remember the keto chow is supposed to be a meal. And that means your meal should be four to 600 calories. That's where it should be. If you're not consuming any fat with it, you're going to get hungry quickly because the protein will fill you up in the moment, but fat's gonna help sustain you until your next meal. But if you're gonna have it without fat, make sure you're using at least 10 grams of fat in each shake. Bare but minimum. I, I highly recommend you get it up to three tablespoons to four tablespoons of melted butter or three to four ounces of heavy whipping cream which would make each meal between 400 and 550 calories. Uh, next one is from Carol. Hey Carol, love Element T, but have a question. Why don't they use more potassium since we require over 3,400 milligrams in a day? I'm sure I'm not getting near that eating OMAD. Okay, so I really can't speak to why Element doesn't have a lot of potassium, but I can speak to my guess and some of it comes down to you need to consume your electrolytes in certain ratios. If they were to put, say, a thousand milligrams of uh, potassium in there, they would have to make that like have about 3000 milligrams of sodium. And that would honestly just be undrinkable. It's going to affect the taste dramatically. It, so that is one of the issues that I have with just flat out potassium supplements. Because if you're not doing it in the right ratio with your magnesium and your sodium, you could end up with other issues. The biggest electrolyte you need to focus on is your sodium and then your potassium and your magnesium. They all work together. One of the things we love about Salty is Salty does give you more potassium, but they do have it in the right ratios. You also need to be consuming fluids with them to make sure that your body can flush out anything excess. So when it comes to OMAD, that is one of the issues that I have with OMAD and why I don't recommend it on a regular basis, especially for women, because when you're eating OMAD, it's almost impossible to get all of the nutrition and nutrients that you need in a single meal, especially when we look at what we were just talking about when it comes to the amount of fuel you're supposed to be consuming. And that is why we have this community, because that search 
for how much fat is just enough fat for me? How many times can I interact with food in a day and still be safe? Like we have feelings about this thing while we're on this journey. It can be hard. And and this is an investment of our time and our energy and, and our heart for finding this, discovering what works without having to say, hey, I'm putting myself in a corner, never interacting with food. I can't be trusted with food. That's where I had mopped myself, right? Where it was like only 500 calories a day, try to have little to no fat, just you know, more carbohydrates, no fat. I'm afraid to interact with fat. I can only be trusted to have one meal a day because I'm afraid that if I give myself more food a day or more meals a day, then, then I'm gonna just go off the rails. Make sure you're in community. Make sure that you're staying and talking to people as you go through this because I don't wanna see anybody like I used to be only 500 calories a day, afraid to talk about it and, and just feeling very alone yeah. and, and afraid. Uh, next one is from Juliana. Hey, what's up, Juju B? Said, I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but I heard an amazing quote this week. If you've been Cheeto feed for 20 years, you won't be grass fed overnight. Yes. This really stuck with me. Give yourself some grace. Remember, good, better, and best exists in our language for a reason. 1% better every day is the goal. Have a great week, everyone. That is such a great reminder. If you're Cheeto fed for this long, basically you've been eating the standard American diet or even worse, like the worst version of the standard American diet, like Joe and I, where it's just, it's really just a chemistry assignment, right? right. There's no real food. You're, you're eating a lot of Franken food, highly overly processed packaged food for decades, like Joe and I did you don't need to rush to be grass fed overnight. It's just not going to happen. And it's interesting. So as Terry has kind of begun a little bit of a low carb protocol, keto type of protocol in her eating, she's noticed that there's a little bit of pressure right from the get go to be 75% awesome, like right out of the gate. Right. And, and that's really challenging. And she was talking while we were walking around Lancaster, how she has to pause for a minute as she's getting started and say say to herself like i don't need to be at a breakneck pace when i look back and see how far i've come in just a short amount of time i'm cleaning things up that's right but let's have some grace right, right. i'm cleaning some things up and as i'm doing this i'm starting to label read just label reading is is a great first step as i think to myself oh my goodness i'm may not, may not be perfect in my eating just yet, but I'm so much better than I used to be. Let's celebrate that. Next one is from Donna. Hey, Donna. Donna said, I wake up at 5 a.m. on weekends and 4 a.m. during the week. I'm having a hard time eating just two meals. If I stay within my macros, can I eat three? It's one here and I'm starving. starving. I ate breakfast at 9.30. Yes. Absolutely. You can absolutely eat three meals in a day. Um, my suggestion is, don't look so much at macros, especially if you're eating the proper human diet. What is the proper human diet? Mostly meat, maybe a little bit of veggies. That's the proper human diet. Not a lot of outside stuff. The more outside stuff you incorporate, the more you're going to have to watch what you're consuming. Like you don't need to count a whole bunch of different things, but eat two or three meals a day Eat until you are comfortably full and then don't snack in between. It's interesting. I'm so glad I, I see kind of like the cord going through all of these comments. You know, it just just keeps making me think of the fact of before we started keto, would you kick yourself for eating three times a day? Right. No, no, of course not. When I did Jenny Craig years ago, it was three meals a day and two snacks. So here's the thing. We're, we've started keto. We're eating so much better than we've ever eaten before. We're eating mostly meat, little bit of veggies for entertainment purposes. We're eating good fats, right? We're eating animal fats and we're eating like organic ingredients. Like we're, we're taking a look at the things on our ingredient label, which is completely a million times better than what we used to do. And now we look for another way to be hard on ourselves, right. which is 
how many meals can I have? If you're not snacking in between meals and you have, like some of us have a 12, 14, 16 hour day, it's completely reasonable that we would want to eat two or three meals a day. Let's make sure we're not getting so hard on ourselves that we're working ourselves into like a fearful stance yeah. when it comes to interacting with food. There may be people that want to do very long extended fasting. There may be people who want to do no fasting at all. The fasting is I, I stop eating at dinner time and I don't eat again to breakfast, right. right? That's fasting. That's enough. You don't need to like hit the ground and be like, I have to do a 72 hour fast every single week in order to be successful on this. Yeah, here's the thing is keto is not a diet, it's a lifestyle. No. If we begin to treat it like a diet, which we did at one point, and I think a lot of people do when Punish they first yourself. get started, you're not gonna stick to it. No. And you need to make this sustainable. Do we eat perfectly? No. Do we consume a bunch of carbohydrates? No, we don't. We have not had bread or sugar or any of that kind of stuff in seven years for me, six years for Rachel. But do we occasionally have something like this? Absolutely. Do we occasionally indulge in like a Quest peanut butter cup or a homemade mug cake or uh, a piece of fudge? Like Nancy brought us some pedo <gasps> fudge the other oh day. Oh my goodness. Yes, we do. Why? Because that makes it sustainable. Is that a major part of my eating lifestyle? No, it is not. It's a treat. It's a treat. But I want to be able to do this for the rest of my life. And if you tell me you're never, ever going to have something sweet, you're never, ever going to have a dessert, you can't ever, ever have something like this again, I probably wouldn't stick to it. I know that's not the greatest thing, but I'm not perfect and neither are you. Nobody on this earth is perfect. There's only one person who's ever existed has been perfect. So just look at it this way. 90% is good enough. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so much better than we've ever done before. Yeah. Next one is from April. Hey April, hubby and I had a date uh, night for the first time in a long time. We went to a karaoke bar because I love to sing and haven't done it in so long. I know alcohol isn't really the best on keto, but I did get a white claw, which was two grams of carbs, but then drank water the rest of the night. I also was uh, starving by that time because it was almost 9 p.m. So we ordered a Reuben sandwich and split it, scraped the contents off of the bread. And instead of the fries that came with it, the uh, only low carb approved side item was Perfect. collard greens. It is possible to go to a bar and stay on track. I'd slip on someone's spilt drink and wang my chin on the karaoke stage, but I still had fun. Oh, I'm so sorry that like you hurt yourself. But a this little is bit. perfect. I mean, you can go out. I mean, we went to what was that? The Shady Maples. Oh my goodness, we had such a Borg. wonderful time. Was it perfect? No, but it was good. It was more about the fellowship with everybody, just getting together and having a meal together. Everybody did their best. There was no keto police. We enjoyed ourselves. Yeah. We had fun because the focus was fellowship. Yes, your marriage, very important. Absolutely. That relationship, very, very important. You're wanting to get healthy and extend your lifespan. You're also wanting to share that lifespan with your partner, right? Yeah. So it's very important that you work on that relationship. So you showed it's perfectly possible. If if you think to yourself, if we can't get like 100% perfectly clean ingredients, we just can't go on a date. That's not good. That's not good. That is not a healthy mindset. You have to go and like put an investment into your marriage. That is the most important thing. And then number two is you will do it as best as possible when you're out on that date. Now, with regards to alcohol, let's let's kind of clear the air. Alcohol is not good on any eating lifestyle. It's right. got nothing to do with keto. You can have an alcoholic beverage once in a while on keto. Just know what it does. So alcohol will temporarily kick you out of ketosis and ketogenesis, regardless of what the meter says. Right. Regard. I don't care if you if you do your your glucose and your uh, ketone meeting meter and it says you're at a 0.5 and then you consume two drinks and it says you're at a 0.5 the next day, you're not in ketosis or right. ketogenesis because your body is currently dealing with the alcohol. Does that mean you should not have alcohol? 
if you want to have an alcoholic beverage once in a while, have one once in a while. Do we occasionally consume a White Claw or something? Yes, we do. Do we do it a lot? No. Why? Because I know that it is temporarily going to affect my level of ketosis and ketogenesis. But that's okay. Again, 90% is good enough. Now, should you be consuming it every day? Probably not. I think April set a great standard. I think it's perfect. I mean, that is a great standard. It was a special date, a special evening. She was having you know, fun with her husband. It was one drink. The rest of it, like she's saying, was, you know, drink water. She ate something. It was perfect. It's the perfect climate. So thanks, April. Next one is from Melanie. Hey, Melanie. Melanie said, I've been doing keto off and on for a few years. When I first started, I was taking a product called Keto Magic from a company that has now gone out of business. I can't find it online anywhere or on as overstock. So I went on Amazon. I got this product to try. I do the most laziest, easiest keto I can because I have little time to meal prep. I eat grocery bought food, rarely eat out. And in the beginning, I feel this product gave me the boost to get into ketosis, but I've read some reviews and not sure anyone if it's doing what it's supposed to. I use the ketone strips to test my levels and on Monday last week, it was showing I was in purple, which is high. I tested myself today and it's in light pink. Still shows I'm in ketosis, but I don't know. I'm not cheating or eating anything I shouldn't be, just not being very strict with my macros. First go around, I lost 30 pounds in two months. This go after two months, I've only lost 10 pounds. My food intake works for me. I'm not posting to find out what food I should eat, but more so what ketones do uh, some of you take and does it work? And has anyone tried the real ketones shift before? Okay, so basically what shift is, is an exogenous ketone. Don't waste your money. Right. Okay. There is a place for exogenous ketones, but it is not in the ketogenic lifestyle if you are trying to lose weight. The only way an exogenous ketone, whether it be Shift, Perfect Keto, um, Go BHB, uh, Prove It, any of them, the only way it could possibly help you on your keto journey is it will give you some electrolytes and help you with the keto flu. It may possibly give you a little bit of energy, which might possibly encourage you to go exercise. But honestly, many times exogenous ketones are going to hinder your weight loss. Here's why. As we said before, the main fuel sources that your body has are carbohydrates and fat. There's actually something called oxidative priority. Oxidative priority is the order in which the foods that you consume that your body will use for fuel. Number one is alcohol. Your body wants to get rid of it. So if you consume alcohol, your body will process that alcohol as fuel, which means it doesn't touch anything else, which is why if you consume alcohol, you will not be in ketosis or ketogenesis because your body is using the alcohol for fuel. Therefore, it is not making ketones. And that's why your ketone levels don't go down or up. And it is not using them, which again is why the ketones go down because your body will use that alcohol. How long does that last? A few hours to a few days, depending on how much you drink. The very next thing your body will use for fuel is exogenous ketones. So if you're consuming exogenous ketones, you're putting a layer between what you eat and your body getting to any carbohydrates that you consume, your dietary fat, and your body fat. So consuming exogenous ketones could actually hinder your weight loss. Not for everybody, but for most people, especially if you're taking them a lot. On average, they're only going to last about 30 minutes to 45 minutes. So and when, that's generous. So yeah, and when you're checking your ketones, if you consume these and then check your ketones, will your ketones go up? Yes, because you're checking and your body has ketones in it. You're, you have them in your blood. You have them spilling over into your urine. The problem is your body didn't make them. You're just giving it to them. It's like a car engine. So if you ever work on a car and you can't get your car to start, this especially old things like car, like engines that have carburetors, like if you have a lawnmower, a weed eater, or an old car, you would buy this, this starter fluid and you would spray the starter fluid into the air intake. It's basically ethanol and the engine would start. It would help your body, your engine start because it would give it a quick burst of very easy to use fuel. 
But as soon as that's gone, the engine shuts off. So right. if you have a bad carburetor, you would spray this ethanol in. Your engine would start. If you had a bad fuel pump, something like that, as soon as that ethanol is gone, usually like three or four seconds, it putters down and dies. That's what exogenous ketones do. You're giving yourself some ketones. It'll quickly go away. And now your body still isn't producing ketones. The best thing you can do is just don't eat a lot of carbohydrates. I'm not telling you what foods to eat. No. We're not telling you to count macros. If you just eat regular food, try to stay low in carbohydrate, under 20 to 30 total carbs a day, your body will produce ketones. You don't need high levels to lose weight. You just need to not be consuming carbohydrates. If you're not consuming carbohydrates and you are consuming fat, your body will produce ketones, which will be good for your brain function. And if you're not eating enough fat, your body will actually lose weight. If you're eating too much fat, then you won't lose weight. Now, as far as the ketone strips, they're not the greatest way to measure ketosis because when you first start, it's going to show high purple Something's happening. because your body's just spilling those ketones into your urine because it's not used to using them. After you get into ketosis, usually about a week or two, that's going to go down. Even if you has ketone, you have ketones in your body, that level will go down on a pee strip because your body is not spilling them into the urine anymore. It's using them. Right. So it doesn't mean that your body's not creating ketones it's or giving working. them. It means your body is using the ketones so you don't have excess ones spilling into the urine. But personally, I would not bother with these products especially if you're trying to lose weight. If you need something for cognitive function, if you need high level of ketones for like mental clarity or maybe brain disorders, maybe there. But if you're trying to lose weight, save your money. Uh, next one is from Christy. Hey, Christy, I've been at this for three months and I've only lost 10 pounds. I'm strict. I keep it under 25 total carbs a day, eat the protein and fat I believe I'm supposed to be eating under 140 of each. And I don't snack. I thought the slow process was maybe due to me having a keto chow shake every day for a lunch made with butter. I stopped doing that a month ago, still only seeing fractions of a pound loss. I do need to start moving my body. I know that. I have no energy for anything after work. I have a bulging disc in my neck that keeps me down, but I know I could be walking at least. I need some motivation and possibly a buddy to walk with. There is a history of thyroid issues in my family, so I'm wondering if that is keeping my metabolism down. All the things, Christy, just like I love how you are having this conversation with us, but also with yourself. Um, number one, I want to encourage you that healing does not happen on our timetable any more than weight loss happens on our timetable. If I was to break my arm and God forbid that happens, I, I really don't want that to happen, but let's say it does. How long is it going to take for me to heal? Right. Yes. Yes, precisely that much time. However long it takes, it takes. And I found that this was definitely the case with my body. I wanted my body to get straight to the weight loss, to the body recomposition, to the helping my skin with its elasticity. I wanted to like get right to it. And I found that there was some internal healing to do first. And it has really been truly six years of a weight loss journey for me. Joe experienced weight loss like right up front and, 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 you know, body recomposition right up front for me. It has been a much longer journey, but it's because I had more to heal on the inside of me. Yeah. So a couple things, number one, 10 pounds in three months is not bad. It's actually great. That's not bad. It's just less than a pound a week, which is a very normal and healthy weight loss. And sustainable, by the way. Because you're also losing fat. So if you're eating 140 grams of protein, you're probably not losing muscle. So a couple things that I would say. I Maybe cut down on the protein just a little bit. Maybe drop it to about 120. Um, you can also try reducing the fat a little bit. Not a too much, just a little bit. Um, it, I don't know what your height is. If you're not super active, you may not need that much. But the other thing that I want you to really, really look at is movement is good. It's also about where is your sleep? Where is your stress management? All of that comes into play. 
But the first thing that I would probably do is maybe just try to tweak the fat, maybe just a little bit. You know, if you had a situation before where you were, you know, constantly dieting like us and always on like a caloric deficit, you may have slowed down your metabolism. Now you mentioned the thyroid issue. I would get your thyroid checked, mm -hmm. but it, it could just be simply because you may have like been doing a bunch of dieting in the past, like Rachel lowering down your metabolism to the point where she was gaining weight at 500 calories. The only way out of that is to slowly increase the amount that you eat. Flat out just exercising won't fix it because if you exercise but keep eating the same amount, you're giving your body more fuel requirements. So you can end up slowing down your metabolism even more. And the other problem is, is the second you stop that exercise, unless you're building muscle, then you're, as soon as you stop your exercise, you're going to gain the weight back. So you focus on building muscle, maybe lower the fat just a little bit. My advice would be tweak the joy. We have to enjoy this journey. We know what we're eating is the proper human diet, but we also need to have enthusiasm for life. So when you talk about like having friends come alongside you and walk with you, like pursuing friendship, I am all about that. Yeah. I think that is great because they're also going to be cheering for you in live time when, when you're having a day, like you're on a walk and you, and you maybe just lament to your friend, Hey, I don't like how, how slow this weight is coming off your weight. Your, your friend is going to have a conversation with you and be like, you're doing great. Keep going. Now let's talk about another subject, something right. positive. When it's just us having conversations with ourselves, it becomes like a real in our mind that's just, this is taking too long. I'm so frustrated. I'm aggravated with myself. Why is this not happening faster? And that's just not a great atmosphere for your personal joy. Next one's from Mary. Hey, Mary. Mary said, non-scale victory. We played a game last night at a woman's church group with Hershey's Kisses. I wasn't tempted and gave all mine back at the end. Wow. I can remember when I would have been anxious to eat them. They didn't even smell good to me. That is fantastic. And I'm so glad that you showed us it's possible to participate in things, even in an atmosphere where there's former temptations, in order to have community in order to enjoy yourself because the focus of that game that you were playing was not to eat Hershey's Kisses. The The focus of the, the game that you were playing with your friends was to enjoy some fellowship, to right. enjoy some community. So don't say to yourself, like, I, my goal is never to involve myself or interact in a situation where I may be, like, you know, around temptation. No. Believe the best of yourself that you are going to be able to enjoy things even in the midst of temptation. That That is really an exciting victory when you're like, just like Mary and say like, hey, I had a great time today and I enjoyed this time of fellowship for what it was about and not focusing on like the candy or the food around it. Next one is from Jen. Hey, Jen. Jen said, I saw my GI doctor yesterday. He prescribed me a medication to increase my appetite. I have issues with digestion and often get sick after eating. I don't get hungry and basically eat when it's time to eat. I'm afraid to take the medication for fear of overeating. I don't know what to do. Wow. Well, first of all, Jen, just look at your medication. You have to make the decision. We can't tell you whether or not you should take medication. If you are struggling eating because you get sick, eating more food may make things worse and cause some other eating disorders where I would start. If this was me, I would start looking at the foods that I am consuming and make sure if you can't eat a lot of volume that you are getting the proper nutrient density. So what do I mean by that? I mean, your diet should be pretty much meat. Yeah. No fillers. Right. Um, if you can't consume a lot of volume and it's for anybody that can't eat a lot of food, that means that everything that goes in your mouth, you need to get the most amount from it. You need high octane fuel, right? You, you need the straight ethanol, the stuff <laughs> that's double the price of regular gasoline for your car, because you can't take a lot in. If your fuel tank only has 10 gallons, you want the one that's going to give you the most from it. So Things like meat, where you're going to get all of the nutrient density, that's what you want. 
vegetables, yeah, they taste great. You don't get nearly the nutrients that they tout from vegetables that you do from meat. Things like having like, I don't know, Quest peanut butter cups where you're, there's no nutritional. nutritional value to it. It's just a fun thing. The protein thing, it, it's not the same as eating a piece of steak, right? Let's be honest. You're eating that kind of Quest cup or a cookie or something like that because like you like it, not for the nutrient density. If if picking up Quest chips or any kind of product that touts, well, this has got 15 grams of protein, unless it is a meal replacement kind of thing, don't count that as your protein. You should be focusing on meat. So I would first look at what are you eating and, and consume the things that are going to give you the most amount of fat, the most amount of protein in the smallest volume. And I would start there. That is definitely something that even if you're feeding kids, like Michelle had to take into account, she noticed right away, as soon as you know, Peyton wasn't only dependent on breastfeeding. You're trying to introduce foods. She's like, I've only got like her little stomach. She can only hold just a little bit. So she was not giving her a bunch of vegetables and things that were just going to take up space. She was, you know, eating bone marrow. She was eating mostly meat because yep. she wanted to get the most goat amount of milk. nutrients, goat milk. She wanted to have things that were like for the calorie impact you were getting like great, great nutrition. So it's the same thing for you. So if you are somebody or if you're feeding a child who you know does not have the capacity to eat, you know, a, a bunch across the day, make sure that it's action packed with nutrition when they do eat. Next one is from Robin. Hey, Robin. Hi, all. My name is Robin, and I'm new here. Well, welcome, Robin. Not new to keto being that a few years back, I lost a ton of weight while living a keto lifestyle, but fell off the wagon for a while and gained most of it back. I'm back and seem to be doing well so far. Glad to be here. Well, Robin, we are glad you are here. In fact, I'm promoting you right to like keto success of the week. We could just put that as the first person in today's um, keto beyond the couch because you're back. That is the message. Maybe somebody else is watching today and you're like, Robin, you're not new to keto, but maybe this is keto 2.0 or 10.0. Welcome back. Yep. The fact that we know where to go back to, right? Like there's, it's so much time that we've spent across this trip going like, where are we right now? And where are we going? We've, uh, how many miles have we traveled? Uh, about so 4,400 miles since we left Florida. There's a couple of times on this trip where we had to go back to start yeah. and when we were trying to find a location and it was honestly easier to just go back to the place where we started and find the catch the trail back from there. So you're back and we're excited to see you once again. Starting over is a victory. Yep. Next one is from Aaron. Hey, Aaron. Aaron said, while it was not the victory I was hoping for, it was the victory I needed. Three months ago, my A1C was 11.4. Wow. I then changed my mindset. I was done losing. Every time I try to lose, I fail. It was time to gain. Wow. Yes, gain. Gain life, gain years with my family, gain inches between my belly and my pants. Well, my A1C this week, 6.1. Wow. Not where I want to be, but it is a start. Also down 25 pounds. I fell down a few times over the last three months, but I got back up. I dusted myself off. And most of all, I didn't punish myself. Yes. I forgave myself. And I just want to say wow. again, we are not doctors, nurses, or health professionals. Okay. Like we said last week, we're two idiots who put ourselves on YouTube. Everything we talk about is based on our own experience. What we've learned from people who are doctors, nurses, and health professionals from research we've done. To my knowledge, there is no medication on the face of this earth that can lower your A1C from 11.4 to 6.0 at all, months? and let alone in three months. That's incredible. And I love what you did. You had the exact right thing. If you're thinking to yourself, if things are not happening fast enough, right. what you need to change may be your mindset has nothing to do with the changes of, of like, you know, how many times a day you're eating or the food that you're eating. You may be doing everything perfectly fine. You don't need to pivot there. You need to decide to focus on the good. That, that can be negative thinking 
punishing yourself like maybe he had done in you know previous times that's the most inflammatory ingredient that you can experience is negativity whether it's from outside sources of people saying like i don't think you should do this keto thing or internally we yeah. can really be our most harshest worst critic next one is from kimberly hey kimberly curious if anyone here has used verda to help get started on low carb keto i got an email telling me their program is 100 percent covered with my insurance i believe i've heard them on uh, some low carb po podcasts before think i'm going to give it a try and can report back if no one has used them for support on the process okay so verda is basically a coaching program that's basically what it is. Um, they're going to provide you with ketone strips. They're going to provide you with a meter. They're going to provide you with a coach and an app where you can like log on and stuff. It's basically a coach. Yeah. Do you need it? Absolutely not. If you can get your insurance company to cover it, I would say, why not? Here's the thing about keto. Keto doesn't require a coach. One of the reasons that we see so many food companies like Kellogg's and Hershey's and all of these bread companies trying to slap the label keto on it is because they can't make money off of us just eating meat and vegetables. Right. Hot dogs and mustard? No. Products like today's sponsor, Keto Brick, that was a product that Keto Savage developed for himself and then a bunch of people like us who watch them were like, well, I want that too. Yeah. Keto Chow developed for himself. Keto Brains developed for themselves. There's a difference between things like that where they were keto and they developed it to help them in their keto journey as opposed to, you know, Quaker coming out and going, everybody's eating keto and low carb. We've How gotta, can we market this so we can get back to making money keto from Keto overnight and oats. Right. So keto itself is easy. Don't eat carbohydrates. It, it's, it's that simple. We complicate things more than we need to. Right. Eat meat, maybe a little bit of veggies. That's all you have to worry about. You don't even have to get into the intermittent fasting. That's got nothing to do with keto. That's just another way to help your body and your metabolism and autophagy. Uh, we don't have to even worry about seed oil. Seed oils are bad for everybody, Everyone. not just keto. But you can stay in ketosis if you consume seed oils. I don't recommend it because they're very inflammatory and they're not good for our body. But that's not a keto thing. Keto itself, just don't eat carbohydrates. But we can slip up. Okay, One of my favorite movies is Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. And at the end of the movie, right, you have the part where you've got Harrison Ford. He's got to walk in. And he's got to walk through. And Sean Connery, who has this diary, the coach, right, is guiding him what to do. And he goes through that one part, right, where he's got to take steps. And he makes a step and he almost falls through. Right. That is keto without a coach. The coach is just telling you where to step to make it easier and more possible for you to experience success. and we're coaches yeah and we charge we try to keep the cost down compared to other people it doesn't make us better it just we try to keep the price down if you can get your insurance company to pay for a coach go i will it. tell you go ahead if they're not willing to pay for it I would try doing it without them first because a lot of the things that they're going to provide for you, you can get for free on YouTube. You can go buy a Keto Mojo. We have a discount link down below uh, and get a lot of the stuff that they're going to give you in their program. You can get it on your own and save some money. But if your insurance company is willing to pay for it, I say, why not? Now, I would say just to, like to, you know, be careful because if you're going to use this and hey, I, if, I'm i like, if it's covered by my insurance and I can have access to Make this. Make sure first. Then, um, yeah. But if you can and you're like, hey, it's all green lights, I say take advantage of it because you're already paying into insurance for it. The only thing that I would warn you with is. If you have one of these coaches that is trying to like help you develop your macros, be careful about them slashing calories for you. Because obviously, as we've said, if you slash calories in your intake right up front, you are going to experience very early on success. 
I have learned personally and with working with lots of other people, that is short-lived because you are going to have to walk the long way around at some point. You're either going to pay for it on the front end by losing slowly, or you are going to pay for it on the back end. And I can tell you it's very frustrating if somebody works themselves down into such a a calorie deficit because their coach wants them to have big numbers, big success at the beginning of their journey. Then when you're like, gosh, I think I have the hang of this, and you continue on with those macros, all of a sudden, you start experiencing a decline in success. You may even experience some weight gain. And now you're very worried and upset because you're like, well, where do I go from here? So just make sure that if you're working with a coach, that they are heading you in a trajectory that is sustainable. That's something that you can maintain. Yeah. And just check and see who the coaches are. Listen, here's the, and and I'm, I'm a certified master health coach. We provide a lot of information for free on YouTube, as do a lot of different people. Dr. Barry, everything is free on YouTube. You can go join his Mighty Networks group, his Proper Human Diet group, um, for a couple of dollars to get some extra information and have a community. The one thing that I would say with your insurance paying for it is sometimes, I'm not saying for everybody, but sometimes you don't take it as seriously when the money's not coming out of your pocket. Right. I know for me that when I've hired a coach, when I've paid to go to a gym, I'm going to use it because I've got money invested. And when there's no money invested because it's just your insurance company paying for it, it's a little bit easier to be like, eh, it didn't cost me anything anyway, right? I do that kind of stuff all the time. So just if you are going to do it, I would definitely try to take it serious and do that. Uh, next one is from Ola. Hey, Ola. I know Joe says you can't multitask, but I'm currently reading outside, getting vitamin D and I cooking pork belly in my oven. Our work gives us five life balance days outside of vacation time. So taking advantage of it on a four day weekend tomorrow, wow. hiking with mom to get rid of the blahs. Also, this book is so funny so that it should help too. Well, I love that. Now, I like Ola calling me out. And she's yes. right. You cannot multitask. You cannot take two things and do them 100% and focus on them. Our, our brain doesn't work that way. If you want to say this is multitasking, it is. It's but Things are happening together. You're doing, you're, do, you're focusing on one thing. You're reading your book. The vitamin D is just kind of like a side thing, right? You're surrounding yourself and, with and a good atmosphere. You've got perfect things going on. But I just love Ola. So she wanted to call me out. So I got to post... Ola calling me out. I definitely enjoyed multitasking like Ola was doing when we were in New York, sitting on your mom's um, porch outside on her deck and just taking in that sunshine. We had a couple of sunny days and we took full advantage of that. And we were watching the, the grass grow, the plants grow, listening to the birds, watching them have a good time, watching the kitties play. Like it was really like that was a good multitasking. Yep. Last one is from James. Hey, James. I may be an emotional mess. However, physically, I'm feeling great. I've lost almost 20 pounds since last August. Wow. Something to feel good about, I suppose. That is a great thing to feel good about. And also that you're hanging in there. I'm sorry that that you feel like you're an emotional mess. I'm glad that you are bringing that into community so that hopefully we can all encourage you just to let you know you are amazing, young man. I am so looking forward to... Um, getting to see you again when we go to Keto Palooza. I believe James and Lisa will be there this year. But I was really glad that we got to hang out at our meetup in Lancaster. Not Lancaster. We saw them when we were in Indiana. In Indiana, correct. Okay, well, that is going to be the end of Keto Beyond the Couch. So, uh, obviously, like we said, this is not live. We will be back on the road on Tuesday, making our way to Orlando where we get to spend a couple days with the grandbaby in Disney World, uh, which is actually on Thursday, which is our normal live stream day. So I don't think we're going to live stream on Thursday because we're going to have the grandbaby. Right. And I want to spend time with the grandbaby. Let's try Wednesday. So what we're going to do is we are going to do our weekly live stream again this week on Wednesday. And uh, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the bell notification. 
Go join our Mighty Networks group if you're not. Members at 2 crazyketoscom will make a post, but we're going to shoot for 7.30 p.m. on Wednesday because we're going to stop somewhere and if I have to stop in a Walmart parking lot, we'll do or, it. Or if I have to stop in a Cracker Barrel, we will make sure we have skies above us so that we can throw up our Starlink. It's just that we're in a very wooded area right now, and that's why we couldn't do this live. But we will be in somewhere. I will drive until I find an open sky area and pull over my inverters up so we can do that. So we're going to go live on Wednesday at 7:30. If something comes up and we get stuck in traffic and we have to push it later, we'll let you we know. will post in our Mighty Networks group and we'll put a post up on YouTube. That's why you need to hit the notification bell. Now, if you like seeing videos like this, take a look at some of the videos we have linked right over there. Also, make sure you pick up the most recent videos I'm going to put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Till next time. Bye. Bye.